Welcome YouTube, welcome to Sin City Living. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. We do have weekly content. So for today, we are going to go over the power press strategy again, only this time we're gonna go over it at a higher table limit with a higher maximum bet to show how you're gonna play it with, uh, with higher limits and still going for that table max as fast as you can. Now, ideally, we want to hit the table max within seven to eight hits of a number. Okay, this isn't super common. We've covered this before. This is the kind of roll that probably happens once every couple of weeks. Um, what, well, not sorry, not once every couple of weeks. Maybe once a week, and once a week. But that's amongst all three shifts and amongst all the tables, depending on how many tables they have. Um, so this is this this is the kind of strategy where you're going for that one amazing roll that happens not incredibly rarely. This isn't a world record four hour roll. You're looking for that 40 minute roll. You're looking for that 30 minute roll. Um, but what you're really looking for is the one that breaks the statistics. You're looking for the one that one particular number hits multiple times more than it should. And that does happen. I've certainly had, had games where I've seen uh, a nine hit 16 times, where I've seen a six hit 12 times. Um, so even on any given day, while we may not hit that 40 minute roll or we may not have that awesome roll where statistically every number hits seven or eight times, we may have that oddball where the same number rolls four times in a row and then the roll keeps on going and then it rolls two more times in a row and then it rolls another time a little bit later. So that's what the power press method is for. The power press method is for people that don't want to grind and want to leave with either all of the chips or none of the chips. This is how I, I put it all the time. So the power press method, it does not matter what the number is, what the point is that is marked, because you're not playing a pass line. You're only playing place bets, and you are going for it. Sometimes you're going to have to throw in a little bit extra money to get where you want to get, but this is definitely not the strategy for the faint of heart, but this is the strategy for the people that want to win large amounts of money. Okay, now we showed this on a $5 table with a maximum, with a table maximum bet of $2,000. And we showed how on those statistical uh, rolls of 30 rolls without a 7, 60 rolls without a 7, um, 75, or 30, 45, and 60 rolls without a 7, and how the power press method can get you to where you are coloring up over $20,000 on a $50 outlay, which is including the extra money you have to throw in. So on a $2,000 max bet table, if you can color up $20,000, $22,000, I think it was, $22,000 after the incredible roll, just imagine what you can do on a $5,000 max table. You're looking at coloring up $50,000, over $50,000 if you catch that crazy roll. Those crazy rolls do happen, not super, super common. So you can't expect this to work every single time you go in. You can't even expect this to work one out of every 10 times you go in. However, if you can win $50,000 just once out of every 30 times you go in and you have maybe a $300 buy-in, you're gonna come out ahead, but don't count on it happening. Again, the odds favor the casino but we've all seen these kind of rolls, every single dealer. So for today, we're gonna to go with a $5,000 maximum bet, $5,000 table max bet, which means that we're probably gonna start off with 64 across including. And now from here, depending on which numbers roll, we're just gonna start pushing them up, but we're gonna have to throw in some more money from time to time. Okay, so be careful, be prepared for that. So we're gonna start with the four and 10, okay? So these both are gonna press the exact same way. So I'm just gonna focus on the 10, okay? The four would press identical every single time it hits. So the very first time the four hits, we are going to collect $3. And we are going to make the 10 look like a quarter, okay? The second time it hits, we are going to make the 10 look like 75. That is gonna require us to throw in a dollar for the VIG on that $25 because it is a buy, okay? Some casinos are gonna mark it with a buy and move it in. Other casinos are gonna leave it sitting right there, just know it's an automatic buy. Uh, I prefer to leave it right there. 
because it's a buy. I know this. The players know this. Everybody knows this. It does not matter. And even the players don't know what it's paying them better than it would if it was a place bet. So they're not going to argue. So from 75, this is going to pay 150 for a $4 VIG, or it's going to pay 146 Okay, now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make this look like 200 Now, that is going to give us $21 coming back to us. Okay, so the very next time this hits, we are going to make it look like $600. Now, what this is going to require is it's going to require us to throw in the $10 VIG for this bet. So we'll throw in the $10 VIG. It's going to pay $400. We're going to stack it all up. Okay, now we don't have $500 checks here, so we're going to use this blue $50 check. And we're going to make this look like $600. Okay, so the very next time this hits, we're going to go up kind of a weird way. Okay, we're going to make this look like 1700 Now, it paid 1200 minus a $30 VIG, so it paid $1,170, which meant that we had $1,770 to work with. So, we actually collected $70. Okay. Now, the very next time this hits, we are going to make it look like... Five thousand okay. dollars. We have collected two hundred dollars on that. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. We've collected forty dollars off of that. I had the wrong big in my head on that one. So now we are at table max. If this is a five thousand. $5,000 maximum bet. Now here's the thing that you may notice with this. On the 4 and 10, because the payouts are higher, we actually get to table max six hits. Six times the 10 rolls, and we are now at table max. We started with a $10 bet. We've had to throw in a couple bucks here and there, but we've also collected a couple bucks here and there. So the 10 has rolled six times, and now every time this 10 rolls, we're going to be collecting $10,000 minus the VIG. Okay, that's pretty strong, pretty strong. All we need is for that 10 to roll one more time. Seventh time, we collect $10,000. If it rolls more than that, even better, okay? Now, my personal strategy is once a number is at table max, I'm gonna collect. But then the next time it rolls, I'm gonna put a different number up to table max. That different number has probably already pressed up, who knows how many times, so I'm still gonna be collecting quite a bit of money. But that way I, I really push to get to table max. Now, let's see how we would do this with the five and nine. Okay, now the five and nine, we're not gonna be able to pull this off in six hits of the number, but we are gonna be able to pull it off in seven hits of the number. We are gonna to have to throw in a little bit of money though. So. We're going to start off with 10, of course. The first time it hits, we're going to throw a dollar in. We're going to make it look like a quarter. Okay, so we've added an extra dollar to it. The next time this hits, we're just going to go all the way up. This is going to look like 60. We didn't have to throw anything in, but we also didn't collect anything. Okay. The very next time this hits, we're going to make it look like 150. Now, in order to do this, we had to throw in six dollars. Okay. So now we were at 150. The very next time this hits, we're gonna make it look like 350. Okay. Now, what that means is that we've actually collected a little bit of money. We have collected ten dollars. Now, from 350, we are going to go to 900. Not even going to worry about that. As far as how the payout goes, we're just going to go straight up to 900. We are going to collect a little bit of money here. We're going to collect $60. Okay. So from 900, we're going to go to 2,000. You're going to collect once again. We collect $160. Now keep this in mind. 
because the next one sounds bad, except that we just collected $160 and we have collected $60 prior to this. We're definitely ahead in this, in this particular situation. So now is where the bum rush really hits. The next time it hits, this pays $2,800. we are gonna go straight up to 5,000, which means that we need to throw in, we need to give 200 back. But we give 200 back, we are now at table max. This 5,000 will pay $7,000 every single time it hits. It took seven hits to do that. Seven rolls of the nine, and we went from a $10 nine to a $5,000 nine. Again, that's pretty strong. And I'm gonna play this the same way I would any of the others. The first time it hits, same bet. Give me my $7,000. I wanna make sure I'm ahead for the day. Because no matter what happens, I'm leaving shortly after this roll ends. The, th the next time it hits after that, let's take one of the other numbers up to table max and collect whatever happens to be already on that number from my presses. Then I'm gonna do the same thing, same bet collect again. So that's how the five, five and nine will work. Now let's look at the six and eight. Okay? The six and eight gets a little bit tricky. There's a couple different ways to do it. Okay? So we start out with 12. Now, as soon as that hits, we're going to press it up to 30. Now in order to do that, the player needs to throw in $4. So they're going to throw in a five. We'll give them a dollar change. We go up to 30. The next time it hits, we're going to go up to 66. So they have to throw that dollar back that we just gave them. Okay. So now they are at 66. Okay. The very next time it hits, they're going to throw in another $7. And from there, we're going to go to 150. Okay, so the six and eight, in order to, to power press up to table max, we do have to throw in a little bit more. Because the payouts are lower, this is a lot harder to get to where we want to get. And now from here, we're going to go up to 300 and collect a quarter. Now from 300 is where things start diverging a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys two different ways of doing it. Depends how fast you want to do it, how much you want to throw in, okay? Because this is going to add an extra roll to it. So, the next time this hits, for this guy, we're going to throw in ten dollars. Okay, we're going to take this up to six sixty. Six hundred and sixty dollars. Now, for the one that's playing it a little bit more conservative we're gonna take it up to 600. So if they're playing it a little bit more conservative, they're actually gonna collect $50 here, okay? Now from the 660, you're gonna to have to throw in more money. We're gonna throw in $70 when this 660 hits. But with that, we go up to $1,500. Now, this player that played it a little bit more conservative, they're going to just stick with that conservative. They're just going to go up to 1200 which means they collect 100 bucks. Now, from the 15, this player is going to shoot up to 3000 Now, by shooting up to 3000 they're going to collect $250. Now, this player, this player is going to go up to 2400 and with that 2400 they're going to collect $200 now this player that's at 3000 now this is the point where they can go all the way up they're going to go up to 5400 and they're going to collect 1100 seem to be running out of blacks here almost out of yellows as well I should probably boost that up Whereas the one that's playing a little bit more conservative is going to do exactly what they've done up to this point and just double up. So now they go to 4800 They collect $400. So this player is at table max. This player requires one more hit. Now the very next hit 
is when they go up to 5,400 and they collect $5,000. Okay. Now, it may seem like this player has collected a whole lot more money than this player, the one that's playing a little bit more conservative. But you have to keep in mind, this one took an extra hit. This player, by throwing in more money, they're really pushing, they bring their six or their eight up to table max in eight hits. Eight hits, they go from a $12 eight to a $5,400 eight. The very next time this rolls, it's gonna pay them $6,300, okay? This player, it took them nine hits. They paid a little bit more conservative. They didn't wanna throw in as much money. So once they got to the point where they were gonna to have to start throwing in a decent amount of money, they just started doing a solid press, just a standard press, double my bet every single roll, which got them up to the 5,400. They did collect $5,000 at one point, okay? But that was on the ninth hit. This player on the ninth hit is gonna collect $6,300. So this player would have over $7,000 sitting there in front of him, while this player is gonna have over $5,000 sitting there in front of him, okay? The other thing is that as you keep adding more and more hits to these, they get, the likelihood of them rolling is still the same, of course. The likelihood never changes based on the previous rolls. The likelihood of something rolling is what it is. Always math does not change, physics does not change. But I would feel a lot more comfortable hoping to hit, hoping to hit nine times for a solid payout versus hoping to hit 10 times for a table max payout. That's just me. So I personally would play it this way but there's nothing wrong with playing it this way, the conservative method either. Either one works. And this is how you go from 64 across including to having individual numbers at table max. Okay. Have to throw in a little bit here and there. It's a very aggressive style of play. Okay. This is my primary method of playing, although my favorite method does tend to be what I call the mid-press method that we've gone over in the past and that I will go over again dealing with higher limits, $5,000 tables, $10,000 tables, things along those lines. So thank you very much, YouTube, for watching. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. We have content coming out all the time. We'll catch you guys next time.